Hey everybody, as you may have guessed, we're here to talk about zero clients. And I have a ton to share here. I've shot a ton of footage on zero clients. I've talked with Del, uh, Del Wise again on this. I brought Jeff back in. He's so helpful, thank you, Jeff. Um, but I wanna do a little bit of an overview before we dive into uh, this video with Jeff and I. And to do that, I wanna start with an old architectural diagram that was built by, I would say, one of the original zero client vendors out there. Panologic. So let me dive into that for one second. So Pano would start with this architecture within their pitch on zero clients and they'd start with showing the PC that you're replacing. So the architecture of the PC is a system bus, you got CPU, memory, some storage, your OS interacts with some drivers to control all this stuff. Pretty standard stuff. But in virtualization, we take all that stuff and we push it off to the data center and we're gonna replace that endpoint PC with something else, most likely a thin client, right? And so you look at the thin client architecture and you got a system bus, CPU, memory, disk, other things, and you see they're identical. So they would make this argument. Why replace a PC with a PC? And I present my argument, who cares? <laughs> Architecturally speaking, this isn't what I'm trying to solve between a zero client, thin client PC. What am I trying to solve with all of this mess? I'm trying to solve complexity of my desktops, trying to solve complexity and security, the endpoint device. I want a rich user experience and I want some flexibility. I want my endpoint to be nimble. So I want to focus on that. And to do that, we're going to flip over to this conversation I had with Dell and then we'll come back at the end of the video and talk about this a little bit more. I'm here with Jeff from Dell. He and I just shot a video online. Uh, we kind of went all over the place and I kind of forgot that, you know, we have product we want to show off and we want to show off a demo. And one of the biggest feedback we got from that half an hour conversation we had was that Citrix and Dell don't have a zero client story. And I know that you say there's nothing further from the truth. So can you share with us a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, total nonsense, right? I mean, the zero client is one of the most important products for customers who really care about manageability and security. And, and in fact, we've got the very best zero client client on the market specifically designed for Citrix and that we designed with Citrix engineers. So let me tell you why this is such an important piece is that when, when customers want security, they want a device that absolutely needs no protection, needs no antivirus, needs nothing there to keep it safe. And so a zero client has often been mis uh, articulated by other vendors as a device that is hardware only and, and that has no software at all. So it's just chips. Although that's probably technically correct, it's also the wrong architecture because a device like that is frozen in time and can never take advantage of new Citrix technologies, new security capabilities, anything like that. And so we recommend against it. In fact, Wise developed a product just like that in 2006 and never introduced it to the market because we realized the failing. We introduced the Zenith technology, which is still the number one zero client for Citrix, because it had the ability to have just enough firmware and right, so we no operating system on a Zenith device. It's a, it's a subset of our very famous ThinOS technology, but it exists only as firmware, so it's under 10 megabytes, right? So that's really just all fits in the firmware chip. And what it does is it manages the Citrix receiver for Zenith, which is a custom-built receiver that Citrix and Wise work together on. It manages the network stack, and it handles the ability to update it and make sure that it stays healthy. So what's really important about a zero client device, and we happen to have a Zenith Two Pro here, and I'm going to just go ahead and power this up, and we'll let it kind of power up in the background. But but let me talk about why this architecture is so important. Number one, the Zenith architecture in its entire lifetime, we've thrown black hats and white hats, has never been successfully attacked by any outside party. Now, what's important about this is that this device cannot be infected by any uh, virus that is already on your customer's network, right? So if there's a Windows virus or something out there, it cannot affect this device. This device cannot be infected by somebody taking a USB stick and inserting it into any of the USB ports. It cannot be infected by anything that the worker or the user does to, to move software around. It is, it is simply impervious to any sort of that, that, that sort of attack. So so what are we uh, seeing here? So this is the, I think you were telling me this is an x86 device. Yeah, so this particular one is the Zenith 2 Pro and it is based on a multi-core x86 architecture. And, and that's really helpful for a couple of reasons. Great performance, great video performance, but also it has the ability to do some new things that are coming. For instance, Citrix and Dell are working together on some Zenith uh, capable 
uh, link extensions, right, for our customers that want to use full unified communications. This device, as an x86 device, we expect to be able to announce support for that later this year. So that's great news for anybody who owns one of these. There's other elements about the Zero Client that are important. Manageability. This device does not need to have the continuous management that a Linux-based thin client or a Windows-based thin client would need. It doesn't need to have active antivirus, which you would need for a Windows-based thin client. It also is automatically managed. Very seldom do we release any sort of update to the device. It's usually only new features. We don't have to do security updates like other operating systems have to do. So when, on the rare occasion you do manage it, this is automatically managed by the Zen desktop environment or our own WISE device manager software, or it can be completely automatically and invisibly managed. I hate to interrupt, but Jeff just said some amazing things that really help us with this conversation that we're having about zero clients today. So I wrote some notes as he was going through that, and I want to review it with you real quick. I mean, this is what he's talking about. This device, the Zenith device that Dell and Citrix work together to build, has never been attacked by an outside source. It can't be infected from an outside, it, it can't be infected via USB stick, it can't be infected by the user. That sounds pretty secure to me, right? And Jeff even goes so far to say it can, it's impervious to these types of attacks. Those are pretty strong words, especially since he's a CSO and you know has to stand behind those words. That's really strong. They truly believe that this is a secure way of building a device. And as you said, this was an x86 device, which means if you looked at it, it probably looks a lot like this thing, but it works. It's really secure. And where I think the key point is, is management. I've actually had uh, the unique experience that I've deployed a lot of our competitors' stuff. In fact, I've deployed our competitor's zero client. I used to work at the zero client vendor, and I like those zero clients. But Jeff points to an issue that I ran into, and I saw a lot of other customers run into with these type of zero clients as well, is that they're locked in time. They can't move forward with new updates. Yes, they can do minor stuff. I used to work there, and we could do minor improvements, but what about major ones, like link support? That's a pretty big deal to a lot of customers doing, be a VDI or do, being Zenapp, right? You want to have one of your top programs able to use the clients that you bought in the past. And the problem is with a zero client or any kind of hardware device, you're locked in time. And so you can't take advantage of new things that'll come out. And that kind of sucks because the world is software, right? We're in an app economy. We're not, we don't care about the hardware. I don't, I, mean, I guess I'm a nerd, so I do look at the hardware specs of a phone that I buy, but ultimately, we're buying a phone because of the software. It's the new version of Android that I'm interested in, the new vo version of iOS, or what apps are out there. That's what's important to me. And so in this world, we want an architecture that is flexible, that allows us to be highly secure, super easy to manage, but very flexible because things change and we need to adapt with the times. We cannot be locked into a specific hardware model that doesn't allow us to move forward. So that's what the Zenith is. It's super secure. I mean, you, you heard the words that, that Jeff was just using. But the other thing is manageability. This is something I find kind of interesting. Um, if I were deploying my competitor's product, which I have done, uh, I can actually use Wise Device Manager, WDM, to manage those zero clients. So that same WDM I use to manage a Zenith client or their, anything that's uh, thin OS or TOS. It's, it's one management console. So to make an argument that one is less management to the other is, is not accurate. I actually would use the same management to manage both. And as Jeff says, it's 10 megs. I think that's wrote it down. You know, under 10 megs is the size of this operating system. So to going back to the beginning, Pano made an argument that this is basically a copy of PC, and so why would you replace a PC with a PC? Well, I would re reverse back to say that hardware-wise, I don't care. Use whatever is going to be the most cost-effective and give me the highest performance. And you saw the performance in that video. Very good. But from a software perspective, make it secure as secure can be. Make it really easy to manage. And now you've got yourself a zero client. So I hope this uh, video was a little bit informative. I uh, hope I didn't ramble on too much. And if you have questions, feel free to comment below.